disruptors and curious minds, CEOs, founders, book lovers, book nerds. I'm Mark. This is Jeremy. Welcome to the Thinking on Paper book club, where we read between the lines, where we dig in, explore, extract the strategy, the insights, the ideas, and sometimes the, the total lunacy of books that will change your mind, books that have stood the test of time, books like this month's The Order of Time by Carlo Rovelli, who incidentally we have asked on the show and without a single quanta of irony being lost, he didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> Carlo, if you've changed your mind, DM us, yeah. Um, so uh, thinking on paper, reading on pa- re- uh, reading is a team sport. So I'm going to pass the baton on to Jeremy, who is the striker, the Harry Kane of book club no. with, um, yeah, shoot from the hip, Jeremy, chapters eight and nine of the order of time. Well, you know what? You know what I did in when I read a lot of times, I get into situations where, you know, the curiosity is lit, but my brain is utterly confused. And I'm like, man, I almost have to do like a little research to understand what the hell all of this stuff means. And and I had, I'm looking at my notes over here. Um, I have like entropy has come up a bunch in, in this as an explanation of like time zero is based on entropy. And I, and I kind of understood entropy, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to spend like 15 minutes to see if I can get my head around this subject anymore. So I just, I bounced around and I looked at a few things and, and, you know, physicists, scientists, feel free to mock me. Uh, in the comments as needed, you know, we, we are not physicists. We're just trying to get our arms around this stuff, but you know, entropy as a measure of the level of chaos or disorder in a system, right? So in the past, entropy is, you know, very low, right? And as we move through the arrow of time, entropy increases, right? And, you know, from a universal perspective. So in the universe, entropy started out really low. Big Bang, entropy has been increasing ever since. And not to give anyone too much of a downer, but eventually when the universe, the entropy hits equilibrium, not a good time for anybody because nothing's going to be around. So in between all of that is a measure of time and the box that uh, our reality is. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I feel a hell of a lot better about entropy now. Having said that, it's funny that you started with... um the the words you started with because I felt the same reading this it was like I was I was thinking about being on like the York, the North York Moors or Dartmouth in England it's just all this fog and mist and I'm walking through the fog and there's like this silhouette the shadow walking through the fog and that's my understanding of what the hell he's talking about in chapters eight and nine nine and ten and like I keep trying to reach and I think I'm gonna grab the understanding and understand it and then it just disappears and then it's back again and it's disappeared I'm like just back and forth between I think I'm going to get it and then suddenly like the the idea just disappears from my mind it's like no I don't understand it but I do understand I think I do and no I don't it was like that just this back and forth and by the end do you know what I've come to <laughs> my own conclusion and I don't care how wrong it is but um I've spent enough time on this book that I'm Time is a human construct. It's a construct of consciousness. It is a result of our consciousness. Our ability to to comprehend the macro to a certain de- degree and our inability to see the, the microscopic, um, they combine to give us... Yeah, I'm going with that. That's all <laughs> I can't... You know, it's, it's really interesting, your analogy of like walking through this... this, this, this town right with these light poles and you're going you know you're you're i don't think you mentioned the light poles but i'm about yeah, to mention it's like north poles. york moors it's like uh fields and hills and fog but yeah okay so picture you're on a college campus that's really foggy and then these light poles right and it's super dark and then until you get to each light pole there the light starts to emerge around this fog and there's a story about uh, Werner heisenberg when he came up with the uncertainty principle and again physicists Feel free to mock me if I've missed any of the super awesome details of this. Don't mock him. Put the right answer in the comments. Yes, don't mock me. Put the right answer below. But that he was on a walk through through campus and similarly moving from light to darkness and fog, he like had an aha moment related to the um, uncertainty principle. So, Mark, your aha moment is related to your understanding of time uh, in in an interesting way. So here, all right. So here's where else I want to go with chapter nine. 
chapters one through eight broke us down, right? Yeah. It's just like the military, right? We get in, we get into boot camp, and they beat us up, they break us down, only to build us up the right way. So they 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 wrestled this false understanding of time that we have, right? That it flows, that it flows, it's all together, it's all one present. That's been ripped from us, and now we are starting to layer in what this stuff actually is. And, and the question that I put in my notes is quantum interaction the possible key to understanding time? Well, that's what he says. Right. Um, it, it's, it's the key to understanding time, but also the reason why we don't. Uh, but yeah, because he, 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 he meant, well, before that, we should talk about your favorite subject, emergence and thermal time, and how kind of those two concepts and ideas bring us to the missing link being the quantum understanding of it. So, which I should, by the end, by the time he's talking about blurring and Boltman's theory, like, yeah, it, was, it was all right. So, thermal time. Well, Do we according need to know what that is. So this is actually time described by physics that actually doesn't flow, right? Yeah. So was that your understanding of it? Yeah. Um, the proof in physics that a time that that this defined time, thermal time, actually doesn't doesn't flow. Yeah. In fundamental relativistic physics, where no variable plays the role of time, we can reverse the relation between macroscopic state and evolution of time. It is not the evolution of time that determines the state, it is the state, the blurring, that determines the time. Time that is determined in this way by a macroscopic state is called thermal time. Yeah. So, and, and we live in the macroscopic state. Like yeah. What we observe as reality is the macroscopic state. The, and check this out. This, this was a cool little quote. The dense marble table would look like fog if I were shrunk to a small enough atomic scale. Everything in the world becomes blurred when seen close up. So... You hit this nail on the head, I think, that was really interesting that our understanding of time is is based on our understanding of quantum mechanics, which is which is counter to everything we know in reality. To be able to understand how quantum mechanics work, it's counter to how we see, feel, and experience the world, meaning it's equally hard to figure out this concept of time. Is, am, I, am I landing on anything there? Yeah, it's construct of consciousness, yeah. You, you are, yeah. Um, so we go from thermal time to quantum time um, with some words I can't even pronounce, let alone understand. Give it a rip. <laughs> um, the, the, no, the, the non-communitivity um, determines an order and consequently a germ of temporality is a determination of two physical variables to determine a physical variable is not an isolated act it involves interaction so i don't really know what that means but when i was reading this there was key parts and i've mostly highlighted them where i felt like it was important to what he was getting at but even though even though i didn't understand exactly what he was saying they felt like if I could, and in later readings, I'll go back to it. Perhaps they're the keys to understanding it in more clarity. Um, because when he said, I've got to admit, I nearly closed the book when he said, um, <laughs> do you know what I'm going to say? He said, due to this non community which I can't pronounce, the set of physical variables in a system defines a mathematical structure called non commutative von Neumann algebra and that ouch was the ouch that that smashed my brain right in the face man like but but the non commutativity thing is i believe my understanding of it is that that it's speed or position not both it can't be both is that what right. is that what that is right so you can know the speed of something well, but not position that. and you can know the position of something yeah. but you can't know the speed you can't know both of those things because then the magic of quantum mechanics wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, there was something he added to that. Hold on. Is that maybe chapter 11? Because he's that's when he's talking about entropy again. Yeah. So are we in, where, are we moving to chapter 10? I think we're in we're, chapter 10 now, right? I think we're bridging the two chapters with... Um, yeah, so chapter... Blur, the blurring... 
So yeah, I think you you, you explained the blurring quite well in the past because he's back onto the blurring of, um, and it's that blurring our inability to to see measure whatever the quantum level that actually gives birth to our concepts of time so maybe so so we actually on the episode with the two uh phds that we had this past week um kind of kind of talk through this uh um this this understanding of of um our basically our equipment that we were born with is not able to sense all of the little things that are happening. So we basically generate approximations and those approximations are our reality. But do you remember he told the story of, of a book and I can't remember what book it is. It, I, it's the same one in here. He, oh, really? He was talking, you no, know, because we, you asked him like what kind of, if he was writing science fiction, what would they be thinking about in their writing of science fiction? And he mentioned that maybe he was thinking about a story about some people that if they could see the quantum realm, if they could see the the mac the microscopic, what would it be like? And then in this chapter, he talks about this this Alan Cones. This who what wrote, page? You, what page are you on? One hundred twenty-three. Okay. Um, and he co-authored with two friends a short science fiction novel about exactly what our guest was talking about the other day. Oh, amazing, amazing! Now Can I'm going to talk about that. I mean, like, what would happen if you could, if we were all walking around and we had we could see the universe as it was as well, it think, is. think about how overwhelming that would be like <laughs> sensor sensory overload right we get overloaded like just with social media stuff that hits us every day and like targeted ads and and things and phone calls and meetings and kids screaming and all of that but now you can see fields now you can see quarks and neutrinos and all this whole i can't imagine like no wonder we are in uh, a, a state of approximation because um yeah, it would be overwhelming, I think. Yeah, I don't have no doubt about it. Um, so, anyway, eventually he gets on to entropy. Uh, that's I think you're, good, again, good at this. So entropy was, if I understood it correctly, he'd kind of explained this new phenomenon of time, but quantum time, this combination of quantum and thermal time, but that doesn't explain the passage of time uh, the past and the future it just explains this concept maybe in whatever the now is i don't know but entropy is the explanation for why we have a past and a present and a future which he mentioned this at the beginning but now he goes into it again um well the f the funky part about this the the way this chapter 10 set um set the tone was was uh perspective right Local, yeah, no, yeah localized perspective but then also, you know, relative quantities, right? So if like, if if you're yelling at one of your kids, like, to, and this was his example, yelling at one of your kids in the backyard, hey, you know, uh, you know, sit down or stop moving, right? And that's relative to our movement on the planet, right? But if you're on a train and you yell at your kid to stop moving, they can't officially stop moving. They can stop moving relative to the train, right? So that that kind of set the tone of like, okay, these are uh perspectives that are particular to individuals right and these interactions are particular to me or particular to you and the things close around us and those interactions all feed up to kind of this this universal order but i got it to this like very hyper localized experience it, which is exactly what he said at the beginning about now being localized to you and now isn't the same on Proxa B or Proxa Centuri or wherever out in the galaxies than it is now. And entropy is in the same. And this entropy is relative to you and to your small world. And what we, I like the bit he's talking about. Okay, so the the quantum realm in a glass of hot water by you is as far and distant as what's happening on a event horizon in a black hole 100 million light years away in terms of the entropy relative to you in the same way that the now is different out there so the entropy is different and that's how i was trying to understand this notion of relativistic <laughs> uh 
these I was say empathy, but empathy is not the right word. We need some empathy for ourselves trying to freaking figure this out. Like nine and ten were like were crunchy chapters, man. There was a lot of a uh, lot of kind of science in there, and, and scientists and and phys- you, you guys read through this, you'd see it as a simplification of it. But even us trying to kind of get up uh, get up to speed there, uh, it's a lot. Something that I something one of the things I think about is is okay, what is time made of, right? What is time um yeah, you know, what are the pieces that make up time from a scientific perspective? And then I'm really landing on like entropy as an element of time, like a scientific element of time, right? And then um the gravitational field as the media that like it manifests maybe. So those are those are the two again. Scientists and physicists, please correct me and help me along my way. Come on the show, Carlo. Help us. Carlo, we need your help. We need your help. We need your help, Carlo. This is a call. Um, um, I but that's you're right. That's, but yeah. again, like you're, but it's you're still trying to make sense of it for you with your view of the universe. And this, this is just the, our how we create these ideas in our consciousness. And the, I think you know if. if Maybe we all have to find our own peace with this to find something which our internal narrative is happy with uh, rather than trying to wrestle. Because even himself, a lot of the time he says, I mean, I can't, I can't, I won't find it now, but he says, this is kind of like, this, uh, this is my idea. This is what I think is happening. Okay, Carlo Revy, he knows more than most when he's saying this is my idea, but there's nothing as far as I can read there are there are some rifts that he has yet to have proven through scientific yeah. experimentation, right? Yeah. Um, so here here's this might help us along too. Uh, page one fifty five. Let me summarize the hard ground covered in the last two chapters. In the hope I was I, so happy when I read that sentence, and then so underwhelmed when I read what comes next. <laughs> it didn't. It it kind of helped, but it kind of didn't help, right? Yeah. Um, in the hope that I have not already lost my readers, Carlo, we're still with you. We're still hanging on. We're hanging on by a thread. Uh, in these in these last two, but I know this is not a thread. It's a field. We're hanging on by a field. It's a field. It's a field. I th- but the good the thing is, we gotta live it. We gotta think about this stuff longer than the time we just read it and the time we talk about it. This stuff's gotta marinate a little bit, I think. But um, it goes back to you know the world is not a series of events ordered in time, right? There are these different relationships between different physical variables, right? Depending on where you are, and. Each part of the world interacts with a small part of those variables. I've got variables sitting in this box, this rectangle here. You've got variables sitting in your box in that rectangle. You know, do they do they connect? Maybe they connect, maybe they don't. But, you know, all it boils down to is, well, not all it boils down to, but like the state of the world with regard to a particular subsystem. So there's a smaller subset of the universe that is our reality, but also there is entropy measured in our small universe but measured in the larger frame of that like it's still entropy it's still like that's the measurement of time it's still entropy and shuffling a deck of cards that example right you have six uh six red first and you put six black next and that is that is a specific order what did he call it was it particular let's see no that's special configuration that's what he calls a special configuration six red cards followed by six black cards, all right? That's been put together by someone, right? So this would get into like the God science thing if God had ordered those cards, right? But entropy is the how that organization slowly becomes disorganized, more disorganized when you shuffle. So you shuffle it a couple of times and you maybe see a black card appear in the white, in the red chunks and the reds blending with the black. And then all of a sudden, instead of a nice order, we have chaos we're just moving to chaos we are literally just moving from something well ordered to pure chaos it is the election season maybe that's maybe that's uh well that's what the universe will i think maybe the universe took a step towards that final entropy last night maybe in america oh or whatever. my god i'm moving, I'm moving to the I french did, alps ps I've yeah got, i've got this not getting any better if I don't do that a, a thought on um just what you were saying and it, it reminded me of the episode we did with leon about um superpositions of time superpositions of ele- element electrons okay the superpositions of time as well you you made me think of maybe the superposition of entropy entropy is a probability that there's, there's, 
Holy. Yeah, I think I think that's enough, Jeremy. I think... Uh, well, technically, we should in call time on this. Call time. Everything is a probability. Yeah. How's your brain feeling, man? Um, look, I, I'm finding my peace with time. It's This is really helping me to find my peace with time. And it, it, I'm thinking of a, a scene in The Matrix where, where I can't remember his name, but it's like, you know, looks like steak, tastes like steak. Yeah, you know, time is passing. It is time. It's all I'm aware of. So who am I to to question is its existence on? Well, I think I think if you, guys, if you guys are yeah, if you guys are reading this book with us, I I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna run through these chapters again at some point. Just as a you know, now it's 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 kind of like it's kind of like you know my my father in law back in the day. I'd never shot a shotgun before. He put it in my hand. He said, you know, put up the air and shoot it. And I shot it, and he threw it right back at me. He goes, oh well, now you know what it feels like. Do it again. So now that I know what chapter nine and 10 feel like, P.S. I've read them twice. I'm going to read them again because I feel like I'm close to like connecting the dots. What, what a, what a, an incredible analogy. And on, on that note, we'll see you next week for chapters 11, what well, the end of the book of um, The Order of Time by Carlo Rovelli will be announced in the next book in book club any day now. Go to thinkingonpaper.xyz and you can check out the other books, The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman, The Nexus by Uday Tino. We've got uh, Shane Parrish's book, Clear Thinking, which is after reading this. Yeah, I, the clear thinking, not so clear thinking. Hey, pop, pop books in the comments too. Let us know what you want us to read together. We'll read it with you. If you want to read it with us, we'll put you into a rectangle and we'll we'll get, get all of this stuff going. But reading is a team sport. Go team. Be curious, stay disruptive. Keep thinking on paper. See you next time. Bye-bye.